Now everyone can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, well, religion has always been a part of my life ever since I was little. Um, I grew up, I went to two different Catholic schools when I was little, and my whole family was always really into you know, their faith and their belief, but um, to me, it wasn't really a very prominent thing in my life until very recently. Um, because when I was little, when I was going to those schools, it was, um, you know, I was little, I had ADHD extremely bad as a child. I couldn't sit down, I couldn't focus. They tried to kick me out several different times from Catholic school because um, I would do laps around the room because I just couldn't sit still. And um, so really I didn't retain much. And then we changed to public school and uh, so it was really kind of background noise, if you will, for me um, until very recently. But when I kind of went to middle school and elementary school, I started really kind of looking at it um, in a different way because as I got older, um, the, the hyperactiveness started going on a little bit. I couldn't focus still, still can't focus, still have to move around. They call me happy feet at work because I can't stop moving around. <laughs> But, uh, you know, generally, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they give a witness, they talk about, you know, the troubles in their life, and we're going to get to that, but for really good, it's not, you know, it was never a family issue. My, my parents were always very supportive, you know, whichever route I chose, they tried to make it the best for me, and, you know, my whole family as a whole generally was very supportive. My sister and my brother sometimes were not so supportive of me, but, you know, that's how it goes. Um, but, um, you know, I had no real friends going into you know those Catholic schools because we were moving around a lot and I was kind of a weird kid still I am and uh, so no one really wanted to talk to me but um, one of my closest friends in the whole world third grade is when I got my real first friend uh, Josh Fulton which can't be with us today he was gonna be but um, he you know I, we were on the playground together and uh, I had no friends first day of school and we're standing there in this lineup on the wall, it looked like prison, and I still remember it, because like, they line up all the kids on the wall. And then I looked at him, and I'm like, you wanna hang out? And he said, and he, and he sighed first, and I knew that that meant something, because he saw me earlier in class doing laps. And so he's like, all right, fine, I'll hang out with you. And we've been friends for over 10 years now. And, um, but he was my first friend, and that was the first little bit of acceptance, which is gonna be kind of really the main point of this, is. I never really felt like I was ever accepted because I would act and think differently than everyone else. And so going into fourth and fifth grade, you know, it was kind of just me and Josh and my friend Sandy and we would hang out and have a lot of fun, you know, but again, religion was there. I believed in God. I never didn't believe in God, but he was just kind of that, I'm a, if I'm a good person, I go to heaven. There's no, there's no real rules I have to follow. There's no things I have to do. It's just if I'm a nice guy, I share my food at lunch, I get to go. You know, because that's what you think about in third and fourth grade. And, uh, you know, so generally through that time, it was really just kind of, you know, I believe in God, I love God kind of thing. And, but once I got into, you know, really, you know, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, things started getting a bit weird. Um, when I was walking home from school one day um, during sixth grade, um, I was walking home and I hear a really loud noise and I look up and there was a really bad T-bone accident and this is really kind of something that really changed me because I saw the two people in the accident and it was really really bad there was you know the guy was hanging out of the window and there was glass in him and it was really bad the woman wasn't moving she smashed her face on the front of the car from the inside and so I don't even remember walking home I just remember being home and I you know, and for me, being that weird kid, um, you know, I felt like I, I really had low self-esteem and I couldn't tell people about what I saw. So I decided the best thing would be to hide it and act like there was nothing wrong with me. You know, I didn't see anything, I, you know, everything's normal. But it started eating away at me through all those years that I couldn't explain to anyone, you know, how I felt. and. So it started kind of bleeding out into my life where people would be like, you know, there's, there's something not really wrong with me, but there's something that's not quite perfect about me, and people started noticing it uh, a little bit down the line, but um, a little bit um, after sixth grade to seventh grade, I met my friend Frank back there, and uh, you know, we were friends, we started out in music class, and uh, so we had a lot of fun there, 
But um, you know, he always he had a um, a very uh, very religious family. He came, comes from that, and so he was really the focal point going into high school of my religious faith because I pretty much because you know Catholic school I was little and ADHD didn't pay attention at all, so I, I didn't know any anything. And he he was like, and he always tells me he's like, you look to me like I had all the answers. But I can only answer like one or two of your questions. So we'd start, I'd start walking home to his house like almost every day. And that whole way home, I'd be like, so what is, does God do this? Does God do that? What are the rules I have to follow? What's all that? And he was just like, oh my gosh, this is awful. <laughs> because I just couldn't stop talking about it. And um, so, you know, I started really getting into it. And then, um, you know, things were starting to look up for me a little bit, you know, I, I felt like people were starting to, you know, because I had two really good friends, you know, things were starting to look up for me, and, uh, and then uh, I started dating this girl, Jessica, and she was, she was a lot of fun at first, I didn't really know much about her, she went to a different school, but um, after about a month of dating, um, I called her up, and her sister answered, and there was loud music in the background, and I realized she was at a party, and um, I could hear her, you know, her, um, you know, I couldn't you know, quite hear what was going on, but her sister explained to me that she walked in on her, uh, I'm just gonna say, you know, messing around with another guy, and so I was, you know, pretty much really upset, and so I said, you know, we're done, and you know, I hung up the phone, and little did I know that she was on drugs, and she had extreme family issues, and so later I learned that she uh, killed herself um, about uh, three days after that. Um, she slashed her wrists and then died of cardiac arrest in the hospital. And so, you know, I got that phone call from the sister, but the parents didn't really like me much anyway, so they didn't want me at the funeral, so they said, you know, don't bother. And that really was one of the things that really made me, you know, go back into that dark place that I was in when you know, I witnessed those two people die, and you know, it just really brought me from this point where I was almost to where I wanted to be, right back down. You know, I really didn't talk to people much. I was really, I was really mean to people. If you talk to half the people in my old high school, well, I, I can say old high school, I guess, because I graduated, but it's still a bit early for that. But uh, you know, they, they would always say, you know, you were so mean back then, but now you're really nice to everyone. And that was because I didn't want people to get close enough to me to where. Um, I felt like if I opened up, it's like, you know, opening up a scab, it's just going to hurt and that's going to bleed. So I decided, let's keep everyone at arm's length. So I was rude to people, and I pushed people away, except obviously for my friend Frank and, you know, Josh, because they've proven that they don't care how weird I get. They're going to be there in here for the long haul. So um, after a while, though, uh, you know, I started going to church, and, um, you know, I realized, um, you know, that even though I felt like I was never accepted, um, that the real like thing that pushed me over that edge to get over it was that when I realized that no matter how bad I like I feel or how like you know no one else would want to accept me you know Jesus will always want to accept me and that's really the point that got me over it and I'm like you know what this is the right place to be and I feel really happy here and the cool thing is you know with a lot of families when they get this kind of life revelation whatever it is uh, they go up to their family and they, they might get mixed reactions, but when I came up to my family, like, you know, I want this, I want to be this new person, my family's just like, sweet, let us know how we can help. And I like that because, you know, it made it so much easier to me. And so, you know, I started going to church more and I started trying to get more, you know, active in the church. And Frank, who about a year before me said, hey, this church stuff is awesome. So now he went into it, so now I had somebody going it with, so I wasn't jumping in alone. And it was kind of cool that we were the same age, and you know, we'd been friends in the seventh grade, so it kind of helped. And you know, I still really never told anyone, I didn't tell Frank about any of the things that I'm talking about now until maybe about two years ago. And uh, you know, so being in the faith really showed me that acceptance is one of the major you know, things about it, and so I decided recently that you know, if I talk about it, it might get better for me. So um, I heard that I was able to give a witness at the the, uh, the youth group, which I'm going to get to later. But um, you know, that really helped me out a lot because you know, obviously, I'm up here talking about it now. But um, 
you know, starting this youth group was pretty interesting because me and Frank were kind of at church and we we're like, ah, oh, cool, we're at church. And then uh, Ray comes up and he goes, hey, you know, we need a youth group. We don't have a youth group. And prior to this, about like a weekend before that, Frank comes up to me, dude, I had the best idea. We need a youth group. And I'm like, dude, we don't have the resources and the money for that. I work at Taco Bell. This isn't going to happen. <laughs> and then literally like that Sunday, Ray comes up to me like, we need a youth group. You guys can do this. And I call Frank I'm like, you won't believe what just happened. But you know, that's God working for us, so you know. And uh, so we started it here, you know, we did that, you know, once, uh, you know, every other Sunday kind of thing. It was fun, but, you know, as a whole, you know, youth group, we kind of decided we need somewhere else to, you know, do this because for people to come out there. So we decided my dad gracefully hosts youth group at the house every other Thursday, and then we go to Maxfields now, but... Um, you know, it's, it's so cool to see, you know, as I developed as, you know, a person in faith and, you know, I could see Frank developing too and then Josh starts getting into it and now he's doing it and he's very, you know, I can tell him this, don't tell him I told you, he's a shy dude, like really shy and to see him open up and talk about things and, you know, he's got a lot of skeletons in his closet too so it's, you know, it's kind of cool to see him start to open up too, you know, because we kind of grew up along the same path, you know, except at this weird point, he stays kind of shy, and I just want because you know I love I love talking to people. So, um, but and then you know to see it grow and to see so many new faces in there, it's just awesome to see. And I love working with Frank. I mean, sometimes it makes me want to pull my hair out, but you know, that's okay because you know it's, uh, some things are up for interpretation, and we just gotta say you know let's just throw it out completely for right now and just worry about something. Put a pin in it. But, um, you know, overall, I think that the youth group is really the thing, you know, I was, I felt good about myself, but there was always that dark place where I throw these things, you know, and those two major things in my life really just kind of had this dark place, you know, in, in me, and I thought, you know, that I'd never get over it, and then I started seeing these people, these kids that, you know, grow up the same kind of thing, you know, their, their parents, one of them might be you know, dad and the other one might be addicted to drugs, or, you know, their, their family's an alcoholic, or they had a problem with drugs at one time. And I see them working through it and developing, and I realize, you know, I'm not the only kid that has issues and things that, you know, that are haunting them. And, you know, because for the longest time, you know, even still, I'll sometimes wake up in cold sweats for, like, having night terrors. I don't even remember, you know, what it's about, because, you know, I just, it's hurt me that bad as a child and so you know when I see these other kids and we're working through it together I mean it just does so much for me you know to be able to see that you know and not just that I'm not the only one but you know they put a you know hand on my back and they're like you know I get you and I'm here for you and then you know that really is what got me to really want to help kids that are kind of in my situation like my friend Callie who is uh, she is not of the faith she is an atheist but her mother died when she was a young girl, and uh, her dad doesn't really talk to them anymore. And she's just in this really poor household. And you know, so, and I decided that that was my project to, to help her because, you know, if you know, I can maybe help one person out to show them, you know, the light of the Lord, then maybe, you know, it'll change their whole life. And I've noticed that, you know, from when I met her to now, you know, as I make this change, she's starting to become a happier person too because you know i've stuck by her all these years and i think that you know that's a real prime example of once the lord works in your life he can work in others through you and i think that was a really beautiful transformation and i know frank is now helping me on that um now we're you know we're talking to her hanging out with her keeping her happy you know that kind of thing but um, I think especially now as my family, you know, knows about this now, like my parents didn't know about this until literally a few months ago, you know, because they first heard it of the witness because I just couldn't tell anyone. And, you know, uh, my parents, instead of, you know, being like, oh, it's kind of weird, they kind of, you know, were like, that's okay, you know, you're okay, you know, and they really were supportive of me. And, you know, my brother came up to me afterwards and he's like, you know, if I knew, you know, what happened, you know, I would have. And you know, I told him, you know, it's not a you would have thing. I know you're here now, and I think that that's really awesome that I have that kind of backing and support, you know, going into my adult life. And I think that's a beautiful thing. 
think that's it, actually. <laughs> it's a great witness, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs>